Hello everybody! Welcome to part 2 of the performance review for Adobe Photoshop. If you have watched my last video, you will have seen how terribly the Chuan Hai 12 handled three different versions of Photoshop, including CC 2017, CS6 and CS3. But thanks to two of my lovely subscribers who put forward some suggestions which could potentially improve the performance of CC 2017 and possibly also introduce pen pressure to CS6, so I'm going to start with testing out Photoshop CC 2017. But first I need to reinstall Photoshop because I got rid of them during the editing of the previous video in order to clear up some memory. So while I wait for that to reinstall, I decided to sketch out some kittens. I'll be using the kitten on the right hand side. I kinda scrapped the kitten to the left because the pose looked awkward, but now that I'm looking at it again, all it really needs is an adjustment to one of the back legs. Maybe I'll use it in another review. Anyway, let's head into Photoshop CC 2017 and let me show you what the program is like when we haven't changed any performance settings. I'll begin with an A4 canvas at 300 dpi and I'm using a brush size 17 to draw some waves here. You can see it lags and the strokes produced are not smooth. There is jitter as well as choppy effect to the strokes. To play around with the settings, I went into the edit menu. Then towards the bottom is preferences and from the sub menus that appear, I went on to performance. On this window, I make the RAM available to Photoshop to 90%. However, I strongly recommend you leave this part of the setting alone because later on when I was playing around with the screen resolution with Photoshop open in the background, my Chui had a crash because Photoshop was using up too much of the RAM. Clicking on the advanced setting under the graphics processor setting, I change drawing mode from advanced to basic. Then on a new canvas, I experienced no lag when drawing, which was a fantastic improvement. And I was still able to use touch gestures for zooming. There seemed to be reduced lag, however, it still gave me choppy looking lines instead of nice smooth strokes. I wanted smooth lines, so I went back into the settings and unchecked the use graphics processor box in order to disable it. This gave me smoother lines with no pen lag, but the trade-off for smoother lines was the loss of touch gestures, and unfortunately, drawing slowly still produced some blobbings. Up until now, I have tested Photoshop using A4 Canvas at 300 dpi, despite the fact that I prefer working on A3 at 300 dpi. So what I'm going to do is draw the kitten I sketched earlier, but on A3 size canvas, and see how well we can do. Let me just cover a small issue I had. I was unable to use touch gestures for things like zoom, rotation and moving the canvas or layers through means of touch gesture. On top of all of that, Photoshop doesn't have an undo button on its interface. Most programs to date, and pretty much every Android app I have used, have an undo button on the interface, but Photoshop have kept it old school and you either use a keyboard shortcut or head to the edit menu to be able to use the undo. The problem I was facing was the fact that I had no wireless keyboard and the one that I've placed an order for for my mobile studio pro that's still going to take another week to arrive so I'm kind of stuck with the on-screen keyboard for the time being with the line art it was kind of like a hit and miss sometimes I was getting really nice smooth lines but at other times I was getting the jittery lines it made drawing really difficult and I had to redo lines over and over again until I got the result that I was looking for and in some of the lines I just couldn't get it right at all if I could redo the base layer, I think next time I would turn off pressure levels and using a small brush do the edges, then using a larger brush block in the middle. Around about here, you'll notice that the interface becomes a lot bigger than it was a moment ago, and that's because this is the part where I changed the screen settings a little bit to try and get the icons to be a little bit bigger, because if you remember in my last video I had problems with like a pen offset, so I couldn't always select the icon that I wanted, and um, the pen was offset a little bit and it just wouldn't select the icon, so I was hoping that making the interface a bit bigger, it would solve the problem, which it has. It has made my drawing experience feel really cramped, because I have a lot less canvas space to work with. Unfortunately, without the brushes that I'm used to using in programs like Paint Tool Sci and Clip Studio, I couldn't even make a half decent job of the colouring. But I'm sure someone who uses Photoshop as their main art program and also has a more larger variety of brushes can make a better job of it. In conclusion, on Photoshop CC 2017, having the graphics processor off does make the program faster, but unfortunately it doesn't fix things like the random blobbings that happen, and the larger the brush size is, the more blobs you get in the strokes. 
Because line art is usually done with a smaller brush size, it's not that hard to do line art in Photoshop, but colouring when you're using bigger brush size, it's really difficult and I just couldn't work it out. I stopped the colouring after I finished doing the eyes because it just wasn't going well. So now let's move on to CS6 and see if I can get the pen pressure working. Starting with an A4 canvas with 300 dpi again, you can see that the lines are very choppy and they lag a lot. First I'm going to try and solve the pressure level issue. This icon here which has a few circles with a pen in the middle on the top toolbar is for switching pressure levels on and off. Usually it is automatically selected for many brushes on CC 2017. However in CS6 it needs to be activated manually. Sadly even after activating it I still don't have pressure levels in CS6. And there are no other settings that I can play around with to try and get that pressure levels. So it is really down to the fact that the Chuai Hi 12 uses WinTab technology which wasn't available in CS6 and versions before that. I also tried to fix this lag issue by doing what I did with CC 2017 and that is going into the preferences and turning the graphics processor off. Unfortunately this didn't work for CS6 for some reason so I'm not really sure why um, but I did notice something that even though it says it's 586 megabytes when I'm installing the program but when I came to uninstall CS6 the uninstall window told me that it was 1.87 gigabytes so I'm not really sure what's going on there. I really wanted to finish drawing this little kitten that I started. So I took it onto Clip Studio Painter X on the Chuai Hi 12. I'm currently working on it, not quite finished yet, so I'll upload the speed paint soon and I'll leave a link to it in the description box once I have uploaded it. And that brings me to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed watching this and I'm sorry that I still couldn't make Photoshop work perfectly, but at least you can still do a little bit in CC 2017 to a certain extent. I still wouldn't recommend the Chuai Hi 12 for Photoshop users. If you are a Photoshop user and you want something cheap like the Chuai Hi 12 to use as a graphics tablet, there are other alternatives. For example, the Clip Studio Paint. It's an amazing software and it's not too hard to learn. You do miss out on things like filters and stuff, but you can save it as a PSD file and move it onto Photoshop. I'm still going to continue testing some more art programs that I've never tried before on the Hi 12 so there may be other programs other than Clip Studio Paint that work fluently on this tablet. If you're new to this channel and enjoyed watching this video, you can find lots more on my channel page. And as always, likes, shares, subscribes are always loved. Until my next video, bye!